it will create jobs. And those jobs are, <coughs> the Rikidik mine has the potential to outlast most businesses in Karachi today, and Islamabad. Uh, I, I refer to Karachi because it's the sort of the commercial hub of, of Pakistan. But um, so we, we estimate the initial life of Rikidik is 40 years, that's a long time. That means four generations of people will work, you know, our children's 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 children. That's quite a long time. Um, and one of our jobs is in mining is we, we need to take a part of the pie of value we create and reinvest it in a sustainable alternative to mining because mines are like people. They are born, they grow up, they get old, and they die. And so a good example using South Africa is if you go to Witwatersrand, Johannesburg, if you wanted to build a, the biggest city metropolitan area in Africa, you wouldn't do it in Joburg. You would do it near the coast. Because Joburg is very high, 6,000 feet, and it's got no water. But there was gold mining. So Joburg is a product of that gold mining. And today there's no very little gold mining. It's a, it, it's a massive economic, African economic hub. So that's what we want to do. It's, it's what we do with mining that, that allows us to judge the past and open up the future. And, and again, the reason that we're having this conference is traditionally in emerging markets, miners would come in, they would do a deal with the government and they'd go and mine a mine and you wouldn't know. Whereas we've invited you to come with us on this voyage. When you, when you came, came to my first uh, opportunity and you were last word with the, uh, the, the word from my question, actually, I, I don't have a question, I have a lot of questions and uh, uh, you can call them some trade issues because you were in schools and colleges when we started hearing about this green project of the bullet producing uh, uh, copper and uh, gold. But, uh, uh, Still too late, it's still a dream. And how can you rule out the element of politics out of your project since you are just uh, coming back to the process and having uh, on the one hand case with the government of Pakistan? Because we have experienced that even the government of Pakistan and the government of Gurdistan never uh, been on the same page. I am representing uh, Gurdistan Times and I have to take cover of these issues and things in Gurdistan. The minor uh, uh, news we never miss. So, uh, how can you say that uh, it's not the international institutions uh, on behalf of the uh, American and other Western powers helping out China? Because China has the largest interest in, in already invested interest in Kurdistan, and they have also shown interest in Liquidic as well of late. But uh, uh, you are also coming. Uh, as a theme uh, out of a backdrop of the regime change controversy. How would you respond to that? So the, the important thing, I think there are two things. One is we are not politicians. Um, that's your problem uh, because you the people who vote your governments in and vote your governments out. Um, our, and that's why we need proper agreements that are able to deliver long-term value. Uh, for, and, and I had this conversation just this afternoon with the finance minister about we are investing in the state of Pakistan, the people. And we respect the governments that are come and go. And I, you know, I'll just give you an example. In Mali, again, I think I've worked with 17 different finance ministers in the last 30 years. Uh, so it's about creating rental. So in any relationship, if there's benefits, people look after it. If it's abused or exploited in a negative manner, then you know, it's like the, 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 if you rent a property and you don't pay your rent, 
the landlord's going to kick you out. If you pay your rent, you know, very few landlords kick out good rent payers. And so, and that's the challenge in mining uh, today is that we are, we are mined in, in a modern world. And, and this happens in the, in the United States. We have the biggest gold mining complex in the world in the United States. But remember, the modern person to, uh, wants to be part of something good. The young people want to see, they don't just want to come to work and get a salary. They want to come to work and think that they, and understand that they're part of something good. And so that's the, that's the difference. Um, and, and certainly the, the, the businesses that I've been involved in developing in the emerging world and, and the developing Africa particularly, but we, you know, we are operating in Argentina, which is you know, a, a major crisis, the peso financial crisis of Argentina. We're, we're operating in Chile, which has had a massive regime change, as you know, completely. It makes this look like a stable environment. Um, and so, but, but again, if you don't take the risk, you know, I come from South Africa. I, I was one of the, you know, part of the fight against apartheid. If, if, if we didn't, as a nation, stand up and say that wasn't a good thing, we'd never change that country. We'd have always waited for somebody else to do it. But we did it, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and Nelson Mandela was a special person uh, in that uh, evolution. But then after him, there were some real bad politicians again that took it backwards. But there's a pers perseverance. Um, and so for me, and, and th this part of the world, and I, I, you know, as I pointed out, we work globally all the time. I go around the world four times a year. If we could get, if we could communicate and build something and unlock the real value of this part of the world, South, Southern Asia, it would be the next economic engine that drives our global economy. And if we don't try, we'll never have the chance. And so that's the point that I would make. And that's why, you know, everyone here has a view. You, you, it's your country, you understand the culture more than we do. We are going to learn. And we're going to learn by ensuring that we employ great leadership within your country, uh, from your country uh, folk. Uh, and at the same time, it gives you all a right to ask the question, to seek explanations, and certainly point out when we are not uh, attending to our responsibilities as we should. And then we'll do this together if we if we prepare to. If we're going to be non-believers at the, the beginning, we'll never change anything, and then we'll have to go somewhere else. Please. How do you all believe in exploiting the native good? And uh, how do you all believe in exploiting the native good? And are you satisfied with the mission, with the, uh, the, the uh, official or stakeholders uh, which are benefiting the government? So, um, you know, that's a big challenge. Uh, security and emerging markets, and, and, and I, uh, I can use many examples because, you know, I developed a, a mine in the DRC during uh, the Lord Resistance Army days, and when I first arrived there, there were just uh, very big guns and very big rockets, and, uh, and no one wanted to be there. And, and the point is, it's uh, that your security is your license to operate. It's not about how big the guns are. And, um, and, and, and one thing uh, Barrick doesn't do is in, invest in private armies. So our view is that we come to a country as miners to invest in a country's economy and develop its natural resources for the benefit of all stakeholders, including the community. And we expect the country to provide the, the security uh, to ensure that we can do our job. And so that process is, a, is a, and we follow the World Bank uh, standards on how we manage and you know, the rights 
and the agreements uh, between um, police. So we, we prefer to develop community policing and we will support that. Uh, and then of course you have, so you are in the first circle, you have community policing, then you have sort of more military police and then ultimately you have the army. But um, you know, the army is not, uh, is not a community policing institution. So uh, again, we've had a number of uh, very constructive engagements along those lines, and uh, and I'm confident that uh, and and of course, Balochistan as a province and the regional government of Balochistan is critical in that process to be part of those discussions, and and I've got no doubt that we will. And 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 one of the things, if you look and study the the issues, and, and as I pointed out, we work in, in Mali where uh, the big challenges of uh, fundamental uh, uh, movements, and if it wasn't for our community, we wouldn't have security. It's not the army or the police. It's the fact that the people of the communities believe in what we're doing, and, and, and I think if we provide jobs in that region, uh, we will uh, uh, go a long way. And I think a lot of the criticism that comes from the, the um, detractors in that region uh, lies on the fact that they feel frustrated because their people are being left behind by society. And I, I believe we have a, a great opportunity to address that anxiety, that concern, and, s and sometimes that anger by delivering real economic opportunity. And you know, from where I come from, big business which employs people and more importantly develops economic activity through b other businesses it liberates the community you know there's nothing like a job that liberates you economically it liberates your ability to make choices um, and it liberates you politically as well a last question from here and then we wind up short of me uh, giving you a business spreadsheet, it's going to be a tough question <laughs> to answer. Um, so let me try. Uh, just, th this is a very unique, uh, and I believe uh, another world leading uh, example of proper partnerships. So 50-50 is the partnership. The funding comes 50, uh, uh, so 50 over 75. 